So the USM initiative started in 2013 as a grassroots initiative. We have uh, converted 66 courses across the state to OER over the last four years and saving in total about $3 million for students, um, but we're just scratching the surface. Those open educational resources have been digitized and are no longer confined to textbook or you know, a physical format. And so as we use that, we can reduce the cost significantly of the textbooks. We don't have printing costs. We don't have shipping costs. We can do it at the speed of, of light, which is you know, the speed of electricity and, and the internet. And we can provide those to students which, of course, reduces that cost for them, and that's really a student success issue. What's the product going to cost the students? And that's often a negotiation with a vendor. Uh, we try to keep it under $100. We think that the textbook market's averaging $120 to $150, so mm -hmm. if we can come in under $100, we save the students a significant amount of money, and oftentimes we can even get as low as 50 one of the biggest uh, advantages to working with OER is the student access piece. Unfortunately, right now, a lot of our students have to wait for their financial aid check to arrive, which uh, can be two, three, four weeks uh, in order to uh, have the money they need to purchase their instructional materials, their textbook, and so forth. So when we're able through OER to make instructional materials available on the first day of class, that's a huge advantage right off the bat and allows our students to, to help them be more successful in their courses. The use of open educational resources, that's just a strong trend that's going to, as we have more openness in societies, that's going to have the opening of the glasnost, right, the opening of education across uh, and the access to those things. That's going to be a, a deeper trend. So I try to look at the deeper trends. We did spend a lot of time on a couple of introductory courses where we had to take all that OER material and integrate it into the adaptive system. I like that a lot because it gives the faculty members the opportunity to do what they want to do. They can edit that material, they can reconfigure it, it's a much more viable and flexible solution. Faculty work very hard and they're pulled in many, many different directions. When we add to their loads by suggesting that they're now going to have to take a textbook or what they had been using uh, that was prepackaged, had all the PowerPoints, had the assessments, um, allowed them to pretty much, you know, follow along through the table of contents, and now suggests that they need to recreate that themselves. It can be a daunting thought, a daunting task. Uh, when we can support their efforts as much as possible by providing the instructional design support, the library support, um, and support through the various vendors that are now available to, to help us with these initiatives, I think we can lower that, that challenge and make that, uh, you know, overcome that barrier.